Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? Well, I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen dedicate ourselves to watching every single Shonen Jump anime available to us in English until the end of the universe or the end of our very existence and core self, whichever one happens first. Am I right, Zen? You are. I don't know which one's going to happen first. But no, we'll find out. The fun of the show is not knowing <laughs> what, would, <laughs> what will happen first. Maybe one day it's going to be a real bummer because if I go down, you're going to have to release the show archive on your episode. This is at least the episode where I reveal that you have perished. <laughs> yes, I guess we haven't talked about this. What happens if I perish? But yes, I would like you to release it on your channel. And uh, you can continue on from there, find a new Wokey, or create me from an AI, whichever one happens first. Because obviously, from the two of us, I think it's most likely that I go down first. I live a very dangerous life, Zen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I live a life full of danger, and I'm going down. Anyway, what are we talking about today? Well, thankfully, the series that we go through on this show is obviously Gintama, which usually comes out every single saturday unless we forget a day or we are too busy to record one and then we also talk about two other series on rotation one of them is kuroko's basketball which we started last week and this one is going to be jujutsu kaisen oh are you ready zen you finally have another <laughs> another place to talk about jujutsu kaisen yeah, get to talk about jujutsu kaisen and yet another location oh yeah. talk about everywhere else that i am so i might as well do it here Yes, but before we get into the actual episodes, it's time to do a little history, Zen. Are you ready for your history lesson? I am. All right. You can correct me on any bits of this, because you probably know the series <laughs> history much more than I do. Probably, but, uh, you know, you never know. Yes. So, back in 2017, Gege, how do you say this man's name? Gege Akatami. Gege Akatami. Published uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Curse Technical School, a four-chapter series in Jump Giga. This ended up being super popular, and later it's become what everyone knows it as now, which is uh, the prequel to Jujutsu Kaisen, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. Am I right so far, Zen? Yes. Okay. So, because of the popularity, he starts writing actual Jujutsu Kaisen, which is... Um, released on March 5th, 2018, and the 14th issue of Shonen Jump released 2018. Now, let me ask you this, Zen, because I've decided to start doing this. Can you guess any of the other series that were on Shonen Jump when it debuted at number one? When Jujutsu Kaisen debuted? Mm -hmm. What series are currently, what are the current series that you can read up in a magazine of Shonen Jump? Okay, I'm, you've lost me on this question. I don't, I don't, I don't okay, know what you're so, asking me. So you know how the book Shonen Jump comes out in a big ass book? Yeah. What other series are out at the time? At the time that the Jujutsu Kaisen started. Mm-hmm. Uh, One Piece, obviously. Yeah, that's never. Um. Ending. Yeah, because that's there forever. Uh, My Hero. Mm-hmm. Uh, Black Clover. That's right. Uh, um. Orto is not in the weekly book. Uh, 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 most n nothing else that's in it right now. I know that. I think they're all they're all probably dead by now or all gone. Right. All right, fair enough. Well, I, I will now uh, say it. there are nineteen series that were there when uh, Jujutsu Kaisen debuted, and they are as they follow. It is One Piece, which was on chapter eight hundred and ninety six, which is the end of the Katakuri fight of Whole Cake Island. Number two is the Promised Neverland, which is which was at number seventy-seven. It was at the Goldie Pond battle arc, if you remember that one specifically. I know because I read Promised Neverland. Number four is Doctor Stone at uh, chapter forty-eight. Can you take oh, a I guess? Known that one. Yeah, you should have known that. Can you guess where they are at at chapter forty-eight? Doctor Stone chapter forty-eight. I'll uh, be amazed. He's definitely if in the village by then. Um, hang on, chapter forty. I have I have the answer here, so don't worry. You don't have to go looking for it, but I want to see if you can remember it. Oh, okay. Um, I think it's really close to the final fight. It's got to be pretty close to... Because I feel like the final fight with Tsukasa is like 55, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's probably like right in the middle of their fight, like the mm -hmm. war between the village and Tsukasa's people. 
it is during the versus Hyoga arc and is the chapter where Gen is 100% shown to be on Senku's side. Because up until this point, he's been a crafty man. But this one shows that he's 100% on their side. This is where they're like forging the swords and stuff to fight Oh, them. like where Hyoga attacks the village and they trick them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. into that thinking one. they have guns. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, next one is Haikyuu, which was on chapter 292. Surprisingly, you were never going to get this one. It was not on hiatus at the time. Hunter x Hunter was there at chapter 376. I would Hunter Hunter was in there. I would have assumed it was on yep. hiatus. Which is a, during the Secession Contest arc, which is, I guess, the current arc that it's still on. Am I right? <laughs> I don't... Uh, well, it depends. The um, That's either the one that's currently out right now, or it's the one where they're trying to vote on a new person. Hmm. So I think the succession. Yeah, no, it's it's the one it's currently on right oh, okay, now. Okay. Uh, obviously, that's the, it's the election arc, not the the um, session arc, or whatever. Oh, yeah, my bad. Uh, Demon Slayer, which hits number one hundred in this. I should have gotten Haikyuu and Demon Slayer too. I don't know why I didn't think of this. Uh, you didn't think about it. This is a the. Do you know what the big reveal is for Demon Slayer number one hundred? No. It is the Love Pillar's naked body as she is shown bathing at the end as they enter the Swordsman's Village arc. Hey. <laughs> Perfect. Everyone's like, I love this girl with the silly giggle from the anime. What is she doing here? Damn! All right. <laughs> Next, <laughs> we have Gintama, which is in the current final arc at chapter 673. As you said previously, Black Clover at uh, chapter 147. We don't know any, sh- any shit about Black Clover, but it's apparently the Royal Night Arc. Uh, next is Act Age, rest in peace, at number 7 <laughs> in chapter 7 of Act Age. Uh, My Hero Academia, which is chapter 173. Do you want to take a quick guess on which one would potentially be chapter 173? Of My Hero? Mm-hmm. Uh, God, that was a long fucking time ago, dude. Yeah. Um, it's not my, my villain. I'm gonna say it's somewhere my villain. Next day. You're you're actually pretty close. It is the they're prepping for the school festival. It's before I, I guess the fight with gentle. Not the exact moment before the fight with gentle, but this is when they kick uh, Deku off of the band because he sucks. Oh, <laughs> we we never okay. learn. Which is on chapter number fifty three, where he's hanging out with the uh, his best friend, one of them. Uh, I know the characters, but I'm just going to move on because you don't know anything fun that we never learned. Next, no, these are na- now we're getting into some. Oh, actually, no. Before I get into the weird ones, Food Wars or Shokugeki no Soma, which is at chapter 253, and Robot X Laser Beam, which is at chapter 47. I not- like Robot X Laser Beam. So did I. I actually have read all of Robot X Laser Beam because there's not much of it to read. <laughs> That's it- interesting. Did you know that Robot X Laser Beam was written by the same guy that made Kuroko? I did not know that. <laughs> That's surprising. Same guy. Huh. Interesting. That explains a little bit more of that main character. And now I will ca- categorize these as, okay, I guess these are Shonen Jump things I've never heard. I'm going to ask, I don't know if you know them. Bozy Beats? No idea. That was at number eight. Spring Weapon number one? No idea. End of serialization at chapter sixty-seven. So it was the it's a final. <laughs> this was its final issue. Uh, Hinomaru Zumo. Hinomaru Sumo. It's a sumo wrestling manga. Uh, it was at chapter one hundred eighty-three. I do actually know this one because this is um um the one Neo loves. Correct. Yes, it's the one that Neo likes a lot. Okay, and, oh man, how could I forget this one? This one is actually the uh, Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs, which is chapter 101. Oh yeah, that's your thing. Yeah, it is my thing. I They, they used the Japanese name on this site, so I was like, what is Yuragaki Nasota? I don't know this. <laughs> what was happening? What, what arc is this one specifically? I can look at what naked body is on here, and I'll know exactly what arc I'm in. <laughs> Let me take a quick look. I think this is the one where after the the ninja girl has been rejected after declaring her love. I think anyway. It's hard to tell. There's a lot of nudity in this, and now I'm fearful of looking at this any further. So I'm just going to pause it, but say it was probably during a great arc. Yuna, something we can't see here, because I, I would only want you to see it uncensored. I don't think you have it in you to watch uncensored, Yuna. 
I don't think so, no. Probably not. <laughs> no, they also have never animated all the cool fight scenes in Yuna, but, you know, maybe someday. <laughs> someday we'll run out of shows for Shonen Archive, and hopefully by then they will animate the stuff that is fight scenes and not just the parts where, like, you're constantly wondering, surely that man's penis is entering somewhere from this position. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, the last one, which is Tomato Poo No Lichen Penny? What the fuck? Yeah, this is apparently yeah, something. Just yeah, no idea. Something on Weekly Shining Jump. It is a tomato, cute little thingy. And things that were absent that were usually on here but weren't for this specific issue was World Trigger, which was in a hiatus, and Boruto, which was just not there. Probably because it was a what you said, a bi weekly thing. Boruto is a monthly thing. It's ah, in, that's like Jump Plus. It wasn't there for the month then, is what I'll say. And yeah, those were all the ones that were there for the debut of Jujutsu Kaisen. And number 19 is obviously Jujutsu Kaisen, which is the number one uh, on here. So, Jujutsu Kaisen releases then. How well do you think it does? Badly. Very badly for a while. Does. But eventually, it becomes a smash hit, <laughs> winning countless awards and coming 19th for a bunch of, uh, for TV Oshis Manga Sonyo, which is apparently a 2021 poll of the best mangas to come in for the I think they asked like 150,000 people like hey what are the best mangas ever and it came in 19 for the best in the world do you want to, I'm going to read down this list because you're never going to guess what the best team best night what do you think is the number one manga voted on by Japanese people is for in 2019 yes my automatic assumption is One Piece. Okay, you're correct on number one. But I'll go f- up from 19 of the ones that are also here. Uh, we've got Blackjack. We got uh, Yu Yu Hakusho in 17th. We got My Hero at 16th. We have Doruman at 15th. World Trigger at 14th, which I did not know it was that popular at that time. Kingdom at 13th. Uh, Gintama in 12th place. Hunter x Hunter at 11th place. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure at 10th. Tw- Full Metal Alchemist at 9th. Haikyuu at 8th. Naruto in 7th. Attack on Titan on 6th. Dragon Ball, hell yeah, 5th place. Detective Conan in 4th place, repping that 100 <laughs> <a> year long. <laughs> How long Detective Conan's been going on? Slam Dunk coming in 3rd place. Demon Slayer coming in 2nd. And One Piece coming in at number 1. This is for 2019. Crazy to think things have gone on that high. But yeah, it's gotten a whole bunch of awards. It's also, extre- the thing that uh, Shonen Jump cares about a whole bunch is how much does it sell. And thankfully, nowadays, it is selling extremely well, even getting into the North America. It's in North America, it was it was able to reach New York Times, like graphic novels, bestseller for, uh, and it's been on there since basically February 2021, which is pretty crazy. And it is the seventh best-selling manga franchise in the United States in general. And let me tell you, do you want to know? We want to take a guess, at least as as the time of this article, what the other um, ten best in uh, selling mangas in the United States are. At twenty nineteen. Yes. Uh, One Piece, Demon Slayer, My Hero. That My Hero sells really good in the U.S. Um. Part of me wants to say it's something dumb, like it's just Naruto still. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, oh, I mean, awesome. obviously, One Piece is one. This is in 2021, I should say. Oh, it's 2021? Fall, fall okay. 2021. Um, all right, well, then I'm definitely going to say Demon Slayer. I'm definitely going to say One Piece, My Hero, Chainsaw Man? Although I think it was only in Japan that it was blowing up like crazy, so maybe I might be wrong about the United States thing. But uh, Those are some good guesses. I'll say right here, number 10 is Chainsaw Man. Uh, coming in at number 10. Fantastic. Good job on that. Uh, Toilet Bound Hanako-kun is coming in at number 9. <laughs> uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure coming in at number 8. Jujutsu Kaisen at 7. Junji Ito is just all his mangas in general. Those are in 6th place. <laughs> Anything that he does. Yes. Uh, that man is carrying his entire horror mangas by his name alone. And it's enough for everyone to go, you're buying this because Junji Ito's name is on it. Um Fair enough. Number five is My Hero Academia. Number four is Berserk. Number three is Attack on Titan. Number two is One Punch Man. And of course, number one is Demon Slayer, which is, it probably is to this, 
uh, we'll see on this one. I would assume it's still Demon Slayer, because Demon Slayer still does really good over here. But yeah, now, with all that in the way, all the success... Actually, tell me a little bit more about the early... I couldn't find anything about the early days of it not being successful. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? I think that's pretty interesting to hear. It didn't do very um, well at the beginning? There's not as much to it. I mean, it's mostly just that in the in the very beginning that it wasn't super well-received. Um, the early portions of the story are pretty, like... It, it gets the stereotypical, like, oh, this is just Naruto again kind of shit. Um... People didn't vibe with it too hard. The portion of the story we are not at it yet, but you've seen Jujutsu Kaisen, right? Like you know. What's yeah, I've read. I'm I'm caught up on the manga. You're caught up with. It. Okay. I was about to ask so, you about our histories before we get into it, but I'll I'll tell that now. Um, I've I've read it. Okay. So the portion of the story it, it's in the first season of the anime. So I mean, it's not like a mm. big spoiler or anything, but the portion of the story where Yuji uh, quote unquote dies, uh, and Sukuna pulls his heart out, um, that was written in. So that if it got canceled, he could end it right there and say, "Oh, it's over because Yuji's dead." Wow, smart. Yeah, that, that was added in specifically because um, the reception to it was not that good, and he was concerned that he wasn't going to last much longer. That's crazy. When did it start to pick up? Uh, it picked up in general around like the Kyoto Exchange stuff, but when the anime came in, is when it like skyrocketed. Um, wow. Like, so if you looked at that chart in 2021, um, I think 2022, Jujutsu Kaisen was the highest selling manga of the year. So oh, really? the uh, the anime like skyrocketed Jujutsu Kaisen to fucking not Demon Slayer level, but the second best thing that Res- has blown up respectable. Like that on that level. Yeah. Respectable. I would definitely Much say. crazier than anything else in so, that time frame, yeah. except for Demon Slayer. That's crazy. That's the history. I will say this actually is the perfect transition. So when did you start with Jujutsu Kaisen? Because I was there from the jump. My friend said this seems like something you would like because it's really gory and there's a, there's a guy who does a sick kicks. And I read it and I said this guy does like a sick jump kick off of the fo- uh, on top of to a fourth story building. This manga is for me. And also there's a bunch of weird curse shit. This sounds great for me. Uh, and I've been reading it since then. When did you start? Uh, I'm going to look this up because I remember the exact chapter that was the first, but like the end point. Um, okay, so I started when it was running in the uh, Kyoto Exchange arc because mm. I remember reading it on the app when it didn't have all the chapters yet. Yeah. So you could read up to like when Yuji died. It was like around chapter, I don't know, not not very far in, like chapter 7 or 8 or something like that. Um, and then it skipped all the way to the Kyoto arc, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Like, and I remember having to read it on uh, third-party websites mm-hmm. to to fill in the blanks because I really enjoyed it and I wanted to keep going. Um, fun fact: Did you know that they changed translators in Jujutsu Kaisen for a little bit and had to change back because it was so bad? I do remember. I remember in general in. There was a lot of tra- listen. If you were a fan of Jujutsu Kaisen early on, you were. I think you could feel that there was something like you this went was through a, it. Yeah, yeah. There was a series like so, there was a, a series that was on the edge of potentially being canceled at any point. They they started the series by using the same terminology that everyone knows like now from it, like you know, cursed energy, cursed techniques, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, in I don't remember the exact chapter, but it was really early. It was in like the teens or the twenties or so up until about the 40s or 50s. Um, they started calling it, like, Juryoku. Like, they used the Japanese word, and they put it in. And then they were just like, oh, you know, editor's note, cursed energy. So they would say things like, uh, you know, cursed, like, Juryoku, Jury, whatever the fuck. All the Japanese versions of things, like, cursed technique, cursed energy, etc. They would use the Japanese words for it in the English translation. And it was really jarring, not because like people can't use those words, because obviously people can read it, mm-hmm. but because it started out not that way. And then it switched to it, and it ran like that for a while, and then they people must have hated it enough that they switched back. Because they, they ended up bringing back, like, oh, it's Cursed Energy and stuff now. I do and remember- I think all the volume releases don't have that those translations in them. 
Yes, I do remember this because I remember all the early parts of Jujutsu Kaisen in my brain are completely scrambled because of all the translation issues that I didn't only have on the Shonen Jump app, but when you go to the actual, like, fan, um, the fan one, the fan written ones, do you remember when the fan translations just gave up? Yeah, when they were like, I'm not doing this anymore? Yeah, there was a full-on, full-page spread at the end of one of the chapters, because it had been a while since a new chapter released, and it was basically the translator going, I'm fucking done. This this series is so stupid to translate. It's so difficult and <laughs> dumb and annoying, and nobody gives a shit. I'm leaving. It's done. Find someone else, basically. And I remember reading that, and I was going... Fuck! <laughs> what am I gonna <laughs> do? I gonna get my fix? <laughs> yeah, there wasn't really a because again, like I said, in the Shonen Jump app, but they just weren't supporting it the way you would expect. It was so weird, like the treatment of early Jujutsu Kaisen, because Demon Slayer was kind of built similarly where they didn't have any chapter, but when Ju- when Demon Slayer caught on, they added those pretty quickly. They didn't do that with Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> No, sure didn't. Sure didn't. It took them a while because they were like, ah, well, you know, maybe the, um, this is a fad and maybe it will all go away. Was we don't want to do that just yet. But very thankful for if it if it really is this anime is the reason that it was able to get it. That then I'm eternally grateful for this anime because holy shit, it, um, it was real rough at the beginning. You're right. It, it was one of those things. Was like I didn't really think about it at the time, but looking at it with the context now of saying like, oh yeah, it was kind of rough at the beginning. It was pretty rough. Like, even by the standards of stuff that gets, like, canceled early. Like, um, rest in peace, Red Hood. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. See ya, Red Hood. It, it didn't even get as weird as this one kind of got. And this still feels kind of weird. Um, but good, th- good thing that it's caught up now and it's not that bad anymore. But, yeah, there you go. There's your history plus understanding where me and Zen are coming from this. We definitely wanted to get started on this so that we can talk about season two as it's coming out. Uh, similar to how we did yeah, with Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man. Um, I've never seen the anime at all. I've also never seen the movie. I've also never read the prequel of Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, actually, up until this point, I didn't actually know. until some, I think I eventually saw you say, I think when you tweeted out and said, it's not um a spin-off or whatever it's the prequel and then like you were trying to explain to people because a lot of people were like saying like i don't know what jujutsu kaisen zero is and it's, i bet it's not actually important to the whole story of it um because eventually characters from that specific manga show up and i think the manga expects you to know them <laughs> and when they showed up in the manga for me it i was does, like yeah it, it wants you to know who these people are when they arrive when the who i assume is the main character from zero showed up in the manga i was like who the fuck is this yeah yuta yeah that's the main character of of zero no idea (laughs) i was like everyone seems to know who this guy is i have no fucking idea who this guy is so that's my kind of uh transition into it so i'm gonna be very interested to see how the anime is and how well it's done and how good animated it is and in general going back to seeing some of this early stuff that i have not seen since those early days and so i'm ready for it are you ready for it zen i am perfect then let's get started right away we're going to go through episodes one through five (sighs) start us off with episode one zen episode one of jujutsu kaisen we get introduced to uh our main character he's kind of just in like a crazy room covered in those like what are they what do you call them like spell tag things yeah they're they're like Um, tags yeah, and uh, he's sitting across from a white-haired man with a blindfold who tells him, "Oh, um, you know that you were gonna, uh, you, you've been set up to be executed." And then we get a flashback to the events that lead up to this point, which is Yuji um, calling in to check up on his sick grandpa. But the grandpa says, "Go to your club and hang out with your friends. You don't have to come here every day." So he does. Um, we meet another character who is on the phone and he's looking for something called a cursed object and uh, he's got to find it. Yuji is at the club with his friends and it turns out that his club is the occult club. It's like the um, the ghost research club or whatever. It's basically the same club from Mob Psycho. Um, 
It's a lot of set up. There's uh, a lot of clubs like this that specifically get set up. <laughs> yeah. Um, they want to, like, prove that they have uh, the validity to, like, be a school club, which they can't do because they don't have enough people, so Yuji has to register as a member. And they're like, why? Well, Yuji is a member. We have three. And they're like, no, because he's technically registered to the track and field team, which he never did. And then it turns out the coach of the team uh, signed him up because Yuji is incredibly, like, physically adept. Uh-huh. Uh, he says he doesn't want to. He wants to be in the occult club. So they have a, a competition where if uh, Yuji wins, he won't have to join the track and field team. And they decide to do um, shot put. And the coach is like, ah, I did a pretty good one. That was close to like a Olympic level. And Yuji picks up the shot put and chucks it like a baseball well beyond the world record distance. And he shatters like a soccer goal or something. He like hits it and destroys it <laughs> with the uh, shot put. So he doesn't have to go. Um, the black-haired person looking for the cursed object is kind of walking around the school looking for it. Um, they bump into each other, and Megumi's like, "Hey, uh, I want to talk to you about this item thing." But before he can, Yuji runs off, and he like runs crazy fast and leaves like a cloud of dust behind him. Um, Yuji visits his grandpa, gets some life advice, and he gets kind of the mantra that he um, lives by for the rest of the series here, where it's die a good death when you die. Uh, and then his grandfather passes away. Um, Yuji goes back to fill out some paperwork, and Megami finds him, and he's like, yo, I need that fucking thing. And Yuji's like, oh, yeah, I found that thing, and I gave it to the uh, the occult club. And Megami's like, oh, shit. So they run back, uh, and he kind of we get some exposition about what curses are and stuff. Um, we find out that because that that finger, they're going to be attacking the school to try and get it. Um, Megami runs in there to try to help them, and he tells Yuji to stay uh, outside. The uh, <laughs> that's when we see Yuji's friends, and they're getting attacked by monsters. Um, they're getting, like, attacked by a bunch of curses, and Megami tries to fight them off. Uh, Yuji has this little internal monologue where he remembers his grandfather's words to uh, help people and die well and all that stuff. So he leaps all the way to the fourth floor of the building and kicks through a window <laughs> and, like, punches the curse in the face to get his friend out of it. Um, and then by rescuing the two of them, Megami's dogs are able to kill the curse. Um, and then they get attacked by a bigger curse... And uh, it ends up injuring Megami because he knocks Yuji out of the way and gets hurt. Um, Yuji tries to fight it but can't because he doesn't have any cursed energy. So he decides to eat the finger um, in order to get the cursed energy inside of it to try to save people. When he does so, he transforms into uh, Ryomen Sukuna, whose finger it was, who then quickly kills the curse and then... Uh, Megami decides he's going to kill Yuji because he's become a curse, and the episode ends. And that is... The, they, the AED is not in this one, right? It's in the... the uh, it's one. in the second one. I don't, th- I don't okay. think the OP or the ED are in this one. I could have sworn the OP was in this one. But we'll talk about... Well, just to be sure, we'll talk about it in the next one. So yeah, this is the... Oh, well, here's some trivia right here. Ooh. The premiere version of the episode did not feature an opening. Ooh, and the premiere right. version of the episode also had a unique end credit sequence which featured the song your battle is my battle which is the battle theme of the series really i have to track that down later because i didn't get that on crunchyroll that's cool (laughs) though that is very cool uh man this was you know what maybe it's just because it's been a very long time since i've seen the first chapter of jujutsu kaisen but i was like weirded out by how different it is than what i remember it do you have that specific feeling here? Maybe you do you because I have a Maybe feeling a little. I think the the early chapter is just kind of there's not a lot to it. So just like having the additional presentation of the anime probably helps. Yeah, and that you know you're seeing a bunch of stuff. Like I barely remembered any of the stuff with the coach, and I really like the gag that he did with the coach here, where it's like the kids are like taking selfies with him and they're just putting a bunch of shit on him. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was good, but also when they do a little versus screen versus the field coach, <laughs> I thought that was really well done. 
and they have like little pom poms and stuff. Um, I thought that was nice and well done. But yeah, you're right. In general, it's just like a lot of setup. Like the grandpa dying stuff, even though it's his dying word, it's always felt really weird the way it's implemented because it's immediately like his grandpa dies and then he's like well i can't feel too bad about it and then like <laughs> and then megami shows up and says like we need to go save your your friends are going to die now it, it always felt really weird the transition from it in there and i think even the author himself has said like yeah that first chapter maybe doesn't make the best first impression but the thing that does matter here though is that kick from out the window, which is amazing and awesome. And <laughs> for that reason alone, I really liked it. I was basically waiting for that kick the entire episode because that's what I remembered most from this chapter. Uh, so yeah, that was well done. It's It definitely looks great. The, the Mappa Studios does the animation for this, correct? Yes. Yeah, and it shows. <laughs> it's extremely good looking and nice and it all kind of pops um and yeah i thought it was a good introduction i remember because i remember when i first read again i'm gonna go back to this early memory i like really loved it and it was like amazing i thought it was great um but i definitely maybe maybe it's because i'm so used to how good jujutsu kaisen is now that kind of going back to where i'm like yeah i can see where it's a little bit rough in some parts but thankfully the animation is good throughout and it helps and the pace is good and the music is good everything kind of flows with it so either way good job of uh, adapting this chapter but uh, what do you think yeah it's really good it's a great opening uh i don't particularly mind the opening of jujutsu kaisa i know that a lot of people think it's pretty slow hmm. um and not all that interesting I, I don't mind it i enjoy it quite a bit uh, the anime obviously elevates it a lot because Jujutsu Kaisen, I don't think, finds its footing in the manga probably until uh, the Mahito stuff starts. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I was a very big fan of the anime episode. It looks great. Music's great. Acting's great. Everything's great. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Great first stuff here. And now we can go on to episode two. I forgot that I'm supposed to actually say the name of the episodes. One moment. It's been a very long day, everyone. <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's been a very long day. Forgive me. And I've been working really. Yeah. The name of episode one is Ryo Mensukuna. Ryo Mensukuna. There you go. And episode two was called "For Myself." I was like, I only have one bit that I do for introducing episodes because you carry the hard weight on here. If I can't even <laughs> do my bit, then what is my purpose? <laughs> go ahead zen tell us about episode two uh so episode two they are on the roof of the school and yuji's saying that he's not a curse he's in control uh megami's trying to decide what to do and before he can make a decision uh satsuru gojo shows up who is the teacher the man that was talking to yuji in the beginning um he decided to come in and help because he said that the you know, there were, people were making a fuss about the fact they didn't have the object yet. Uh, he decides to test and see if Yuji can keep control from Sukuna or not, asking him to let Sukuna out for, uh, I think it was 10 seconds, and then to take control back from him after that 10 seconds is up. Uh, they decide to fight, and Gojo just kind of styles on Sukuna while they're fighting. Um, after 10 seconds, he does, in fact, take control. And we get kind of a tiny reveal of what Gojo's curse technique is going to be when all of the rocks from the attack are, like, floating in front of him because they don't actually hit him. Um, Yuji does regain control, so Gojo decides to take him back and determine if he wants to be executed now or if he wants to try to be a sorcerer. He decides that he is going to try to eat all of Sukuna's fingers per their request so that they can destroy all of them at once. Because you can't destroy a finger itself. The only way to get rid of them is to kill someone who has like, absorbed it. Um, they take him and give him a test where he's going to um, basically fight against this puppet of the Jujutsu Hai principle. Uh, and they, while he's fighting the puppet, they're going to test his resolve. And so Yuji kind of tells him, like, oh, I'm going to... I'm going to be a sorcerer because I want to eat Sukuna's fingers, and the principal tells him that's not good enough because you can't 
being a sorcerer is crazy and you can't do it because other people want you to do it. You need to have your own reasons for wanting to do it. So he gives this kind of speech where he says, you know, um, I don't want to regret my life when I die. I would rather be proud of who I was when I die than try to play it safe and regret the choices that I made. So the principal accepts him as a sorcerer and he moves in uh, right next to Megami. They have like different rooms right next to each other. Um, and then Gojo and Megami both find out for, uh, or both tell Yuji that they're going to go to a train station to pick up the next student tomorrow. And we kind of see her right at the end and it is Nobra, the, the reveal of her before uh, they pick her up in the next episode. Mm-hmm. And finally, we this is the one where you officially get the OP and the ED, which the ED is yes. Lost in Paradise, correct? Correct. And this is the, the famous one that I always see, because this is the one that features the Gojo dance. Yes. Which is very good. Very well animated. It's very stylized. <laughs> I would not have imagined. It is, yeah. Fun fact, that... Uh, ED got pulled off YouTube for a while because the musician got arrested for having pot in Japan, which is like the worst thing you can possibly do in Japan. Yeah, I was about to uh, say, damn, did they recast yeah. the vocals? Because <laughs> that's what they do. Uh, in- no, they they eventually it got put back up. Um, okay. I don't know if he got acquitted or something or what, but no, it got he, restored. He probably got taken out back, and they're like, well, we're going to put this up because people really like Jujutsu Kaisen. I know they've done that before for... Uh, <laughs> that's how I know whenever I'm wondering how come they didn't bring back this Yakuza actor it's always because oh because they were found with drugs on them yep that'll do it that's enough you can do a lot of weird shit in Japan but they draw the line at smoking a little bit of weed <laughs> yeah no marijuana anything else but no weed weird anyway cultural differences aside, <laughs> it's a very good ED uh very fun to watch. Never would have expected it. And yeah, and I also like the OP as well. I think the OP is yes. pretty nice. OP uh, is really good. Yeah, I like the little flash in the beginning of the the markings around him for Susan. Not Susan, no. Oh my. <laughs> Sukuna. Sukuna. Yeah, there you go. Um, and also, of course, the little panda jump as well. <laughs> There's like a lot of good stuff for the future of it where I'm just like, ah, oh, this is such a good OP. Real fun to watch. For this episode, my main takeaway is this is, god damn, do I miss Gojo? <laughs> yep. Really like Gojo. He's really good. He is really good. The author's most hated character. <laughs> yep. Uh, easily one of the best, and you can just see it in this episode. It just fucking oozes out style in so many ways. I always felt really bad that he gets compared a lot to Kakashi because Gojo is a, a better version of Kakashi. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's a first of all much better. He's more stylish. I like his style a lot more. I think a lot more friendly, a lot funnier even though Kakashi is funny. This is in no way an anti Kakashi spree, but I need people to realize that the fanfic they've read about Kakashi is not the actual Kakashi we get in Naruto. <laughs> Yeah, Kakashi is like he's really cool, but he gets just washed all the time. Yes, the copy ninja. I've come to beat the copy ninja. It's not. Uh, I've come to kick the shit out of the copy ninja. Yeah, when Zabuza is really happy, he's like, "Oh, I guess it's my turn to beat the shit out of Kakashi for a bit." But yeah, Gojo definitely feels like he avoids a lot of the pitfalls where he's used to kind of um, make an enemy seem much worse than they are. The jobber, basically, with for yeah, lack of the, a he's term. the Vegeta, more or less of Naruto. He's yeah. there to get his ass beaten, but Gojo, so that the bad guy can look stronger. Yes, but Gojo here, and you can see it in the way that he's fighting this guy who would supposed to be the, one of the scariest dudes alive. He's just treating it as like, oh, this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> he's just like amazing at it, and I yeah, love he's him. Yeah, on him the whole time. Yep. And even when he's not fighting, like that bit where he does like, and that's where you're at here, where it like, I think he says in the past, he's like, maybe you can avoid death. And then he goes to here. He's like, and that's why you're being executed. He's like, wait, what happened? <laughs> what happened in the in between here? He's like, listen, I, I talked to, I talked to the higher ups and this is what basically is going down. 
Uh, I liked it when we met the the dude who is in charge of the the high school because his VA is the same as Kiryu from Yakuza. <laughs> Every time I hear his voice, I'm like, <laughs> "Is that fucking Kiryu?" And I'm always happy to hear it. <laughs> so I was glad to see him, and I also like the way his cursed um, uh, energy works, where he has like the little doll in him. Yeah, was, the puppets. Yeah, the puppets are really good. Um, I also like that the puppet continued fighting after the lesson was taught. <laughs> He, he like wax him. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to. Yeah, he goes, oh, for, turn it off. <laughs> I forgot to turn it off. That was really good, and in general, it was nice to see some more of like what Yuji is fighting for and stuff like that, and a complete upheaval of all the beginning stuff in the beginning with the occult club, which is I've always felt was weird because I was like, eventually they're gonna come back to these characters, right? And the answer is no. <laughs> they they really Did you don't. actually see the girl again in the anime in the manga. Oh, yes, you do. You do for a very brief... But not in the for way like I thought it was going to be. Where it was oh, like, yeah, no. They they pretty much abandoned Yuji's regular school life immediately. Yeah, no. They're like, all these characters are gone. I'm, I'm sorry. They're gone now, but it's okay. Here's some new ones. And it works out in the in the general. And yeah, and I like seeing... Uh... Speaking of characters I have not seen in a while. Yeah. Also, I was very happy to see... Uh... You're gonna have to help me with some of the pronunciations of these na- these names because I have never tried to pronounce them <laughs> because I read it mostly. Mo- no, no, Nobara, 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 yeah, Nobara. Okay, that's the way you say it. I every time I look at it, I'm like, my brain's like, say it like pecan, just say it wrong. Pecan. Like, so- like something in me is like this Japanese name has a very specific way of saying it, and even though you say it to me and I'm hearing, I'm like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. When I see it written down, I'm like, obviously that's not how you say it <laughs> at all, and I completely fuck it up. But yeah, seeing her here at the end was pretty nice, and leading up to the next episode, um, yeah, just a lot of <laughs> a lot of nostalgia feel from it. Uh, I also like the part where they also show uh, Sukana's real like form. I guess his true form, if he ever got all the fingers in him, where he has yeah, like four arms. Form. Yeah, I thought that looked really cool. So yeah, another uh, good episode setting up some more stuff. That's how I feel. Another uh, very good episode. How do you feel, Zen? Yeah, it's really good. Getting to see Gojo do stuff is cool because he's like the coolest character in the series. Uh, I really like that little line where Yuji's like, hey, if I get all the fingers and Sukuna takes over, who would win? You or him? And Sukuna's like, uh, Gojo's like, me. I would win still. <laughs> um, yes. He's just great. That. Yeah, everything about him is great. Uh, I like the little gag where Megami's like, ugh, Yuji's room is right next to mine. Man, come on. <laughs> and it's, Gojo's like, yeah, I did it on purpose. Fuck you. <laughs> just do what I want. Oh, yeah. In general, his little needling of him, like when he's taking just a buttload of pictures of him. <laughs> Yeah, when he's all beat up and he's taking a bunch of pictures of him. Or when he arrives to help and he's like, sorry, I'm late. And they're like, oh, okay. Um, why were you late? And he was like, oh, I was picking up treats. Here, hold this bag. It's got food in it. Don't mess it up. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's definitely really good. <laughs> uh, anything else specific? Uh, no. I mean, it's just a good early episode. Yeah, good early episode. Lots of exposition, but it's good exposition. Yeah, a lot of building up for stuff to come. Uh, I also never realized this, because now I'm also looking at the trivia here, that they're supposed to pass the remains through chopsticks? till they're, like, in a jar? But since Yuji's the only one doing that for his grandfather, it's to show that he was right, that there was no one that was going to be coming after him when he died. Yeah. I mm-hmm. had no idea. That's a... It's an interesting tradition. I would have never thought of doing that for someone. That's cool. Episode 3, Girl of Steel. Or as it's called in Japanese, apparently. Takatsu Masume. Oh, Masume means girl. <laughs> now I know what monster Masume... The, what, oh, you know what? I feel like an idiot now. Go ahead, Zen, tell us what... <laughs> I was just like, oh, so that's what Masume means in Monster Masume. The series that's called Monster Girls. The Masume must mean girl. <laughs> Go ahead, tell us what about episode three, Zen. Uh, episode three, so... Uh, they go up to the train station. They are looking around for the student... Um, Yuji's like, why is the class so small? And then Megami kind of explains that, like, not very many people um, 
have cursed energy to begin with, so it's not rare for uh, classes to be really small. Um, Gojo likes Yuji's uniform and reveals that he ordered it to get that hood on it special to make it look different, and Yuji likes it. Um, eventually, they do find her because she is uh, looking at a man who's scouting models, and he doesn't scout her, and she gets mad, and she starts screaming at him. <laughs> and that's how they find her. Um, she's a very hard-headed, loud, outspoken person. Uh, so they kind of introduce themselves, and she is not impressed with either one of them. Calls him a potato. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gojo says that they're going to like kind of go around together because they're all together for the first time, and they get all excited because they're going to go to Rapungi, which they both really wanted to go to. Um, and it turns out it was all just a ploy, basically, to give them a test and make them go um, kill a curse. Yuji can't use cursed energy yet, so they give him a knife, or Gojo gives him a knife uh, called Slaughter Demon that has cursed energy in it. It's basically a cursed tool, so he can fight curses without actually needing to go into Sukuna mode. Um, they go in together, and Megami is stopped from Gojo, saying that it's basically um, a test for Nobara, but Gojo, they let Yuji go anyway. Uh... They split up, because Nobara is, like, giving orders. Yuji doesn't really agree, but just goes anyway, because he's annoyed with her attitude. Um, he gets jumped and absolutely just destroys this curse that he's fighting, because he's super strong. Uh, Nobara ends up kind of sussing out where a curse is, and it realizes that it's inside of a mannequin, which forces the curse out. Um... Nobra is like already experienced. She's been a sorcerer for a while, so she like already has some command over her technique and stuff. Um, but she doesn't realize that because she's from the country, the curses in the city are more powerful because there's more people, so there's more negativity for them to be grown from. Um, she does end up fighting it and wins, but then it takes a child hostage. Um, and she kind of thinks in her head that, you know, it makes more sense if... I live, because even if he kills the boy, I'll be okay, but if he kills me, the boy's gonna die regardless. Uh, but she does end up surrendering, kind of revealing that, like, oh, she's a good person anyway, like, she couldn't condemn the boy to death. And then Yuji punches straight through the wall, and <laughs> cuts the curse's arm off. Um, and then Nobra reveals her other technique, which is the, uh, Resonance Straw Doll, where she takes the severed arm that Yuji cut off of the curse and uh, pierces it with a nail, which causes the main body to get pierced, um, and it dies, and then they kind of make, they make nice with one another. Um, and Nobra kind of still has an attitude, but it's more, like, affectionate between them after that. It's more like ribbing and, like, friendly playing than it is, like, actual Mouse. dislike of one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, this is the first episode with a Jujutsu Stroll. Yes, it is, because they didn't need it. little shorts just... at the end, yeah. Uh, Yuji and Nobara play rock, paper, scissors because they want to get different food. I think Yuji wants steak. Yes. And Nobara wants sushi. Uh, Nobara wins because she says she's going to throw one hand sign, and she does the opposite one and wins. Uh, and they're arguing over which restaurant to go to, and then she decides she wants to go to one that's got, like, the conveyor belt where you just take the plates off. Um because she's from the country and she thinks that's very exciting. Yeah, and then I think what eventually they sell her on her is that the sushi comes in from, like, a bullet train. Yeah, it's faster than a bullet train. And she's like, oh, that sounds great. <laughs> Which I agree, that does count sound of, uh, that does sound kind of awesome. Um, so, this one. Uh, this is great because this was basically the introduction to for Nobara. Um... A character I really like, and I got to remember why I like her so much. She's very, like... What's the... Um, there's a very specific way that she's done that just makes her feel different. Do you know what I mean? From, like, a yeah, typical she's a shonen... Character. She's very, like, uh... You know, animated and out there, but not, like... She doesn't feel one-dimensional. I think it's because they put a lot of her backstory in this. Mm -hmm. Um that she's got a good backstory and she has a lot of like 
personality traits that feel like they would be pasted onto a hyperactive male character. Like, yes. uh, she's got a lot of, like, almost early Naruto vibes to her in this episode. <laughs> where she's, like, very cocky and outspoken and just does her own thing. Yes, she does. Uh, the also obvious one is that she's also got uh, a big chest that never comes into play at all. Which is another thing that yes, is very surprising. Yes, have movies, they never come out. No, it's <laughs> it's really weird to say, but usually a chest that big would result in some kind of a joke. To the point where it's like, no, she's just a woman with a big chest. Which makes a lot of the jokes with her funnier, because her boobs are just big, but they're not really a joke of anything. I don't know, what, maybe my humor is just broken, Zen. I think it's way funnier to have a woman with big boobs and then don't make any jokes about them. Well, do you remember the uh, the fake out joke in the manga, where they make it look like they're gonna do bikini shots of her? Ah, uh, yes, I think I vaguely remember this. Yeah, it's a it's in like a an off week where he's just like drawing pages to have them put in because he's not doing a chapter, and uh, they're all talking about like, well, what are we gonna do? And they're like, oh, well, we can have the beach episode, and Nobra's like, ah, it's finally time. Every series is beach episode, and so you think it's going to get, like, bikini images of her, and it's just a really detailed drawing of Toto in a Speedo. Yes, I do remember this. Yeah. <laughs> Very well done. So, uh, the fact that she's just kind of like that is another bonus thing to like, I think. Uh, but yeah, I also like her technique here, which is just the, the nails and stuff, because it reminds me of, like, the v- voodoo stuff, which is really cool. Like the the putting the nails into the the straw yeah, doll, the doll and, and everything. Yeah, I've like always really doll. liked that technique of hers. And as she as the series goes on, I think you see a lot more of it. But the introduction here is really nice. And yeah, there's a lot of other episodes besides. It's very much a her uh, centric episode, but there's some other cool stuff like when Yushi pushed out like the Kool Aid Man. And <laughs> that's so funny when he punches straight through the wall and he's just like there. Yeah. And then they start arguing about like, hey, you're you bust through the wall. What kind of a normal person does it's like, first of all, it was it's not even that reinforced. <laughs> you're you're driving this way out of proportion. <laughs> Vicky says like it's just cement. It's not like anything major to it. And it's like, no, that's still <laughs> that's still really yeah, hard. He to plays it off like it wasn't that thick. Whatever. Yeah. And then I also like the bit with uh, Megumi as well, where um, it seems like he's kind of pouting because he didn't get to join in on the mission. <laughs> That's what Gojo says, He's the reason he's pouting. Yeah, he says he's pouting. Yeah, and he tries to get his attention, but he's just like on his phone doing whatever. I thought that was really nice. Um, and yeah, this is another uh, good episode as we continue to kind of build up the team. The team is basically all the... Oh, of course, I, I, can't, I have to mention it. When they do the Tokyo bit... Where they're like, oh, yes, where they're all like chibi dancing. Yes, I was like, oh, <laughs> I've missed this so much. <laughs> Wolverine longing into the picture <laughs> as I stare uh-huh. at these. <laughs> it was really good. It was a fantastic episode, and I enjoyed watching it. It was a good old time. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, it's really good. I really like the bit about. Um... Over his backstory and like her friend who got treated poorly in her town because she was from a city so no one trusted her mm-hmm. so to kind of get back at her town she's going to go to the city um and so she you know just to kind of like i wanted to go to tokyo uh i also like the uh bit where yuji's like why are you a sorcerer because you know he remembered that old thing where he was like oh you know i want to live my life no regrets i want to do whatever mm-hmm. and he's like well what's your reason and she goes, because uh, I want to have money, and I want to <laughs> eat nice food in a nice city. This is the nicest way to go to the city? Yeah, it's the easiest way for me to get to the city. Um, I don't know. I, I like Nova a lot. She's one of my favorite characters. So yeah, definitely. Uh, and yeah, uh, it's, it's fun to see anything <laughs> that she's in, really. I also like when they found her. He's like, didn't they find her embarrassing because of the way she's acting with the guy? Where she's like, uh, obviously I I can be a model, right? Just look at me. I'm so <laughs> I'm so beautiful. Yeah, he's like he doesn't ask her, and she's like, hey, why aren't you talking to me? Why don't you come over here? Which she's also right. Why wasn't that guy talking to her? <laughs> she's the right to be in that <laughs> to be that in that. He's like, I'm obviously better. I don't understand here. 
Uh, but I also like when Yuji's like saying, that's kind of embarrassing. He's wearing a, <laughs> some fake sunglasses that say Rook. Yeah, so do you remember what they used to say? Uh, I th- it, didn't it used to be the year? Yeah, it was 2018, which was the year the chapter <laughs> came out. Uh, Can't do so that they were glasses where the two glasses were, yeah, but, but they couldn't do that with the year that the anime came out because it was in, I think, 2020 or 2021. It is 2020. It's 2020, I think. Yeah, and so the, the circles wouldn't fit where his eyes were. So they had to change the glasses to something else. <laughs> That's funny. It's a, a good reason to change something. But yeah, really good episode as we kind of keep moving on here. Let's move on to the next episode, Zen, which is obviously episode four, because that comes after three. Fearsome Womb. <laughs> Great name for the title of something. So... uh we meet the guy who's like the limousine driver, the poor put upon <laughs> limousine driver. Um, and they get a mission to go to a, basically what's like a prison um, because it's, there's a curse in there. It's killing people. And, and they don't have enough personnel to send like a stronger sorcerer in there. Um, they say that the sorcerer is special grade. So they don't want, they don't want him to fight it. They want him to just save the people and get out. Yuji doesn't know what that is, so we get a nice little breakdown, sort of um, expositional explanation of what, like, what are sorcerer grades? What does that mean? How does that translate to, like, real world and stuff like that? Which is nice. Um, really good examples, too. Yeah. The, uh, the driver opens up what's called a curtain, which is a barrier, which kind of reveals that, like, oh, this is why nobody sees this happening, you know? Is because they put up those barriers. Um, Megami summons one of the dogs and says the dogs, you know, if the curse gets near us, the dog will know. Um, and they have that scene where they're like hugging on the dog and like, ah, oh, it's a good doggy. <laughs> uh, and have he's living all the it jerky up. you want. Yeah. Um, there's a woman outside who begs them to find her son, um, even though he was arrested, you know. And they end up finding his corpse. Uh, Yuji wants to remove the body, but Megami says they don't have time. Um, and the reason that he was in prison was because he ran over a little girl while drunk driving, which is dark. Yeah. Um, Megami says, you know, oh, you always, well, they kind of have like a little ideological argument here where Megami's like, yeah, you want to save everyone, but what happens when you save someone and then that person does something bad? And Yuji's like, well, you saved me, and I have fucking Sukuna in me. And then Nobra's tired of their bickering, and then she immediately gets grabbed by a curse. Um, they don't understand why the dog didn't warn them, and then they look over and they see that the dog was killed, and they didn't know that. Um, they have this moment where they're like, we both need to run, and then there's that creepy shot of the monster face like right between them, looking at them the whole time. Um... They try to fight it immediately, uh, and the knife that Yuji has, the Slaughter Demon, shatters against its body. And I, I, I don't remember when he loses his hand, but it's pretty soon after I, that. I think it's uh, the same. He like chops him off, chops off the hand. Yeah. That's when he loses it. Yeah. Uh, then we cut to Nobara, where uh, she's in like this weird void with a bunch of masks around. So she starts fighting him. Yuji tells Megami to go get Nobra and get out while he holds the curse off on his own. Um, he's not able to really do so. He's trying to summon cursed energy. He gets a little bit, but it's not nearly enough. Um, he tries to block a big blast of cursed energy, and it like burns up his other hand, and he's all fucked up afterward. Um, Megami is supposed to give him a signal once they have got uh, everyone out which he does. Um, once the signal goes off, he goes ahead and lets Sukuna take over. Sukuna very quickly starts beating the shit out of the curse that they were supposed to fight because he's on another level from it. Um, originally, he wants it to go help them. He's like, hey, why don't you come with me and we'll kill this guy's friends because he irritates the shit out of me. Uh, and the curse doesn't listen and attacks him. And there's a nice little kind of gag where Sukuna uh, uses cursed energy to restore Yuji's hand. And then he's like, oh, damn it. I healed the kid. <laughs> Shit. Um, they do get everyone out, and Sukuna's in there fighting, and Megami tells him, like, we need you to bring back somebody strong. 
Um, leave, take Nobara, because we barely saved her from where she was. I'm going to stay here. So if, you know, Sukuna busts out and starts rampaging, um, I can be here to fight him. Uh, Sukuna does defeat the special grade very easily by re the first reveal of a domain expansion. So Sukuna is the first one that we ever see. Um, he pulls the finger out of the curse's chest, and then he's like, alright, you can go ahead and take back over then, UG or whatever. And then realizes that UG can't at the moment right now. Uh, so he gets all evil looking and decides to go outside and start wreaking havoc. Yes, and then we get a Juju stroll. Yes, the Juju stroll is them talking about uh, phones. And Nobara mentions like hurting herself while talking on the phone because they um, like the way that she holds her phone so they all reveal how they hold their phone when talking and then the limo driver goes like oh can you hold it on your sh shoulder like that and they're like yeah of course and Nobra tries to do it too and she fails and her phone breaks and she lets out like this scream this <laughs> slow-mo scream as her phone screen shatters in slow motion pretty good okay so here's what I feel about this one. I really like the introduction of them being like, okay, so this is basically how the grades kind of get break break down and stuff. Like, if you have a basketball bat, then you're gonna be fine. A basketball <laughs> bat, basketball bat, a baseball bat, then you'll be fine. That'd be crazy if basketball was played with bats. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, baseball bat, you'll be fine. If you have a gun, you can handle it. And then they have, like, I think by the end of it, it's like, you need, like, a tank. And you might just yeah, be able to do one, it. Yeah, I think it was, like, a, a nuclear bomb to yeah. kill a special grade. Yeah. So it's really great that when they've introduced how hard it would be to kill a special grade, how <laughs> quickly Sukuno just does it. Um... Because it's, like, not an issue for him, and he's not even close to full power at all. <laughs> yeah, he's not trying, like, at all. No, it's he completely jobs out this man. He doesn't even really want to fight him, because he's like, this is not even really worth my time. It'd be way funnier if it was just us two. Um, but this guy is, like, not... It's funny, because he's really afraid of, uh, of him, because he's just been born, right? Yes. Yeah. So he knows enough. So he's basically running on instinct, and the second he comes out, he's just, like, afraid. <laughs> and you can feel how afraid he is and the way he's, like, kind of approaching him. Because up until this point, he's just been, like, having a jolly good time, just, like, laughing, screwing around. But the second this guy comes out, he's like, oh, no, this is a, this is a fuck situation that I found myself in. I'm, like, t two hours old, and I can feel that this is going to end badly. <laughs> So it's a great reveal there. And also like the end reveal when he's like, all right, I guess you've used me. Go back in, take over. And then he doesn't take over. And then you just see this fucking evil smile as the episode. Yep. It's like, oh no, that's bad. I think it did a fantastic job of setting up how bad of an idea. Why like someone is, why first of all, the higher ups are just so afraid of this guy. If he's not even at full power and their current idea is like, let's make him stronger first and then kill him. <laughs> Which Gojo seems to be the only one who's like, ah, don't worry about it. I can handle him. While everyone else is just scared out of their mind of this guy. And it does a very good job of showing why he's scary. And even before then, I thought it, they did well in the animation. Like, Yuji fighting and trying his best and he's just like not getting anything done. He even does like the, um, <laughs> the Dragon Ball, let me put my hands out and see what can happen. <laughs> like, let me just try and mm -hmm. stop with the pure force of energy and like he, it costs him his like fingers. He gets really fucked up here, which is really cool actually. Um, I was also sad to see one of the dogs die after having such a lovely moment with him. He is yes. not gonna get. He's not gonna get that beef jerky then. It's not fair. No, nope, he never will. So unfair with everything. Which is a shame because that scene is really funny, where they're just like hugging him and the face it makes, <laughs> just like it's a dog face. Yeah, it's so proud of itself. It's like yeah, yeah. It's really funny. So of course he had to get gone the way he got did. Which is very sad. Um, I also like them trying to... It already feels... And it's revealed, I think, in the next episode. At least Gojo feels that this was clearly like a setup. Um, 
Because even going into this, it feels like, is it the Jujutsu stuff that bad that they had to send a bunch of first years to take care of this guy? <laughs> it seems like a very dumb idea, but then it turns out, like, no, they are trying to um, get Yuji killed as quickly as possible, and while Gojo's not there, because he's away on other business at the moment, which is the way why they say he can't really do anything for this one. Um, and yeah, I also like seeing the domain when uh, Sukuno actually does it. It was really cool. Like you said, Gojo kind of does a form of it when he's fighting him, or you see something related to it, but he doesn't ever say it. But this one, you actually hear him say it, and you get to see it itself, and it's really cool. The Malevolence Shrine. Mm-hmm. And, you, and you just see him fuck up this guy so badly. So yeah, this is a very, another very good episode. <laughs> Which is funny, because we know where it's leading towards, which is uh, Yuji dying. Uh, if it wasn't for the death part, it really does feel like this is where the ramp up would start. But then it goes into a completely different direction, <laughs> and it has to pivot afterwards. Yes. Uh, uh, it, it, yeah, it does. But I, I understand the logic of, like, I want the series to have an endpoint if I get cancelled. Yeah. It's just really funny that he didn't get cancelled, and he's like, ah, damn it, I, I didn't think I would get this far. <laughs> Let me let me roll back some stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, I really liked it. How'd you feel for it, Zen? Uh, I really like it, too. This is the first one that really sells, like, the creepiness, I think. When, you know, like, oh, they, re- they realize how outclassed they are. Uh, mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah, um, a lot of that stuff. I also like the dog and the, the sad moment where they lose the dog. Uh... Uh, Sukuna beating the shit out of the curse. Really cool. Really cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's a great ass beat. I like Sukuna in general. He's a fun character. Uh, so it was, it was cool seeing him kind of give us the first like reveal of what re- like Jujutsu abilities are. Because at this point we've seen Nobras, we've seen uh, Megamis, and we've technically seen Gojos without realizing it. Because he doesn't like say that he's using it right at that point. Mm-hmm. Um... So it was kind of cool to see like how strong one can be because you know Megami and Nobra have not been super impressive up to this point. So then when Sukuna is just like yeah, and he just eviscerates that thing that was destroying Yuji before that. So yeah, cool. and launching like energy balls out of itself like this thing was a monster mm-hmm. up until this point. Yeah, and Sukuna is just like casually killing it. Yeah, the fantastic job on that. Very well done. And let's get to the ending of this specific two-parter, because this is a two-part with episode five, Fearsome Womb Part 2, Zen. So the second part, we have uh, Sukuna comes out um, and reveals that Yuji couldn't switch back. And so before he ends up getting the ability to switch back, Sukuna rips his heart out, because as a curse, he can live without it, uh, but Yuji can't. So if Yuji takes over, he'll die. Um... Megami determines that he wants to fight Sukuna to try and just do enough damage to force him to heal himself. So, you know, if he has to heal the heart to go back to full strength, Yuji can take back over. Um, They start fighting. They have a pretty gigantic battle where Megami is throwing out his various spirits and also trying to attack him hand to hand. We kind of, we get a really early lore dump, which is like not big lore, but it's just like a neat little thing where Sukuna kind of drops the reveal that most people who use like summon beasts like Megami does uh, don't know how to fight. Like they can't fist fight very well. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's like a big deal that Megami is physically capable. Uh, this comes up again way later. It'll come up in season two actually, uh, where someone says the exact thing and they're like, "Oh, you use ranged attacks. Like you summoned Shikigami monsters, so I bet you can't fight very well." And then he gets his ass destroyed by the guy <laughs> in a fist fight. It's wrong. Um, he summons his ultimate <laughs> creature, his fists. His hands, yeah. Catch these um, hands. <laughs> Megami, uh, or Sukuna says that he's really impressed by Megami's, like, curse technique. It seems really good. So he kind of asks, like, why did you run away instead of killing this thing? Because I feel like, you know, with this technique, you definitely could have done that. Um... And then we kind of get the line that from Megami that's, like, the famous one where it's, um... I'm not a hero. I save people unfairly. Like, I don't 
So I don't save everyone. I don't think the universe is fair. I save people based on what I want, basically. Um, he saved Yuji before just on a whim of he didn't want to see a nice person die. Even though he thought something bad could happen, he still wanted to do the right thing there. Um, Yuji takes over and kind of gives him this last like smile before he dies from his wounds. Um, then we cut to the school morgue, and Gojo is down there extremely pissed off. Um, and like you said, he kind of thinks that it's a setup, that uh, the, the higher-ups waited for him to be away, and then sent Yuji off on a really difficult mission just to get him killed. Um, Megami and Nobara are on the stairs of the school, and they're tr trying to act like they're fine, but they're clearly very saddened. Uh, the second years appear, who, fun fact, are the characters from Jutsu Kaisen Zero, if you didn't know that. Maki, Panda, and Inumaki are major characters in that. Oh, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're the leads other than Yuta. They're the main characters of it. Mm -hmm. Um... It's them as first years, basically. Jesus Christ Zero takes one place one year before the actual series itself. Oh, okay, okay. That makes uh, sense. Yeah, so it's their first year because they're second years now. Um, Maki comes up. Maki's ending. And she's like, why are you... You know, She's trying to like be friendly and like mess with them. And she's like, what's wrong? Why do you guys look so sad? Did somebody die? And Panda's like, yes. Yes, somebody <laughs> died. And they have this nice little moment where she's like, why didn't you fucking tell me that? Like, now I feel like an <laughs> asshole. I'm gonna look um, like a cold-hearted person. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna look awful. Um, and they mention Yuta here. I don't remember if they mention him in the manga at this point or not. They might. I don't remember. But they mention that Yuta is uh, overseas currently. I think he might. Uh, they kind of start talking about the upcoming school event, and they say that they're going to need to uh, get more people because Yuta is overseas, and the third-year student, who doesn't get revealed until like 150 chapters later, um, is suspended, so he can't participate either. So they need the first years, so they decide that Megami and Nobara are going to train to get strong enough to be in it, because they're kind of... maybe I don't know if motivated is the right word, but Yuji's death has you know made them want to try harder to prevent things like that from happening again. Um... We see a meeting between a human man and some cursed spirits. And the curses are like, we want to, you know, curses are the real people because we're born from like human emotion. We don't have the, the mask that humans put on to get through their day-to-day -day lives. So really, we deserve to be the real humans and not hunted by sorcerers and all that stuff. Uh, so the, the man gives them a battle plan and says that the only way that you can possibly win this war is that you need to, one, get rid of Gojo. If he's around, you can't win. And two, you need to get Sukuna on your side. Um, the curses are like, isn't the kid who had Sukuna in his body dead? And then the man is like, ah, not really. Um, so that's how we get kind of the reveal that Yuji is not necessarily dead yet. Uh, and then we see Yuji in somewhere in his soul facing off with Sukuna and the cliffhanger ends there as they're kind of staring each other down. Ooh, spooky. And what is the Juju stroll for this one? The Juju stroll is they are arguing with Panda as to whether or not he stinks because Panda is not actually a real animal. Panda is a um, a doll, a cursed doll. Um, Maki says he should bathe. Panda says I don't need to because I don't I don't have sweat glands. And also, I Febreze myself every single day. Um, they all kind of like, why don't, everyone smell Panda. Everyone smell <laughs> Panda and tell me if he stinks. And Megami smells Panda, and he says, Panda smells like sunshine. And they're all like, aw, that was really cute. And then it ends. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, this is a very good episode. This is where I feel like things really start to... At least for me, this is where I'm like, oh yeah, this is the good stuff that I remember. This is where it starts to be like, my memories of how good it was versus how it actually is. This is where it all 100% meets, and I'm like, yes. I love it. The panda shows up. He's a panda. Everyone just accepts it, except for Nobara, who just goes like, no one's gonna further elaborate on that there's a fucking panda here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one questions it. 
no one questions it there's a guy here who's like just saying in like he's talking in what is it rice ball uh, ingredients or what is it specifically yes it's rice ball ingredients yeah and he's just like saying salmon roe and saying whatever these other things and this other girl who is uh coming in at the worst timing of it <laughs> this is where i remember the series being as good as i remember because i remember actually because i didn't know anything about the whole death part about like oh this is where i want to end it so when i was reading it i was just like i don't know where this series is going anymore because i thought i had a pretty good idea and then i just kind of got thrown for a loop so while i was reading it yeah. i was just like maybe this is like a jojo maybe that was the my jonathan and now he's gone <laughs> and now it's gonna focus on others i'm just gonna re- keep on reading and see where it goes and then that's where i kind of took it in so i was just like there for the ride but a lot of these characters are ones that I really enjoy and like seeing in the future. I also didn't realize up until this moment that third year you were talking about is that dude. It didn't. Yeah. yeah, it didn't dawn on me until you said. I was like, "Wait, is that who the fuck they're talking about this entire time?" Yep, that's the uh, suspended third year. Is Hakari the guy who doesn't show up for fucking ages? Wow, that's crazy. I had no idea that it was that far back that they had even mentioned them. Yep. That's great. That's cool. That's always cool whenever you <laughs> introduce something. Kind of reminds me of a a shorter version of what One Piece does, where One Piece will mention something, and then 400 chapters later, it becomes a thing. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, but yeah, in terms of this episode, I really like the fight with between Megami and... Um, Sukuna, because it's like you said, they're just fucking throwing hands against each other while a bird's in the background trying to swipe at him. Uh-uh. And he's just having a good old time here. He's just like, you can see very much that he's like not really having any trouble with this whatsoever. The only reason he loses this is because he just becomes kind of interested in what this guy can do. Uh, which is a good way of being like, oh yeah. He's just very, it's a good way to have a character who's super strong who would be able to kill someone so quickly. Just kind of be like, I'm kind of just interested in where you're kind of going. It's definitely the, the, the anime fight version of Let Him Cook. He just, he just wants to see what this guy's up to. <laughs> Yeah, he just wants to know. He wants to know what's going on. Yeah, he's like, all right, you got a bird, I see. Okay, you make it from shadows. Very interesting. You do this style, but you also know how to fist fight. I'm I'm a fan so far. I'm going to be honest with you. This seems pretty good in my book. So I liked the entire meeting between there. I like Yuji doing his last uh, smiling at him before he dies and dies from lack of heart the ultimate <laughs> the ultimate way to die as a human is to die of uh, no heart <laughs> no heart yeah no heart syndrome yeah terrible way to go out um i like how pissed gojo is as well when he's in there and that line he says where he's like maybe i should just kill all the higher ups and that will feel like <laughs> you know maybe i should just do that and he completely terrifies the guy he's talking to yeah the um, the the driver someone he's talking to yeah he's just like dropping this note and he's like well and to be honest if the, if you would know a little bit more i in my mind if he actually did try it i don't think that anyone would actually be able to stop him but he doesn't well, that, do it no, definitely not i mean that's kind of a lore related thing is like um they they aren't strong enough to tell him what to do and he knows that mm-hmm. so he can do whatever the fuck he wants basically and so he does which is basically like the only reason that Yuji's not being executed is because Gojo doesn't like the idea. He doesn't want to. So they, they literally can't tell him no, which is why they have to go behind his back. And do this. Um, yeah, so if he wanted to kill them all, he absolutely could. And it kind of comes up later where they talk about it, and he's like, you know, I could kill all of them if I wanted to, but I don't think that doing that would change enough. Like, I, I don't think that would get people to start seeing the world the way i think they need to see it i think that you know i need to i need to raise the next generation to to share my beliefs but not necessarily uh try to force it on them by like obliterating for unbelievable levels of violence not before yeah (laughs) yeah. hitherto unforeseen violence yeah you're right i do remember him talking about that but yeah it's good to see the early parts here where he's like yeah, the specific society they're in, maybe not as ideal as he would would have would have wanted if they're willing to go behind their back to try and take this guy out. Though again, seeing Sugano and him him not being there in any way and being like, ah, oh, yeah, this guy would be a real problem 
if it wasn't for the fact Gojo existed <laughs> to stop yep, him. If Gojo didn't hard counter him, basically, it would be a real issue. Yeah, it would definitely be. Um, I like seeing the evil forces come together and being in a very open place of a cafe. They look like the weirdest group of like cosplayers when they're together. <laughs> Yeah, they just hang out in a cafe. It's great. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I love that about it. And um, let me see here. Any other specific things? But yeah, in general, this is, in my mind, where a lot of the cool stuff starts gathering up as like the series starts to hit a stride. For Whether or not it's hits its stride later for official people seeing it or whatever, this is where, for me, it starts to actually kind of pop off for me, and it starts to get into some really good stuff, and from this point on, I think it's basically just all stuff I like. Like, no real complaints. <laughs> just a lot of just, like, sitting back and enjoying the ride and seeing things uh, pan out and stuff like that. So, really good episode. How do you feel about it, Zen? Yeah, it's a great episode. I love the Curse family. Uh, I think uh, all of their interactions are funny. There's a really good Juju stroll with them later where they're like playing soccer with Gojo or Jogo's uh, severed head. It's really funny. <laughs> um, it's all just like, I really like them as characters. I really like uh, the monk who will eventually reveal to be several different things at a time. Right yeah. now he's ghetto for all intents and purposes. Yeah. Um, get, get, yeah. We're not going to talk about that, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lot, yeah. Um, I really like him. I think he's really cool. And I, I like, really like the bits where Gojo is like seething furious that the higher ups would let Yuji get killed, because it you know because Gojo's whole thing, um, and it comes up a little bit in Zero also is basically like um, these these people deserve to enjoy their youth like they deserve to have a life, no matter what you know Jujutsu higher ups think deserves to happen to them, they deserve to be happy and have a chance to live. And if I have the ability to make them able to do that as long as I can, I should enable that for them. Um, so it's nice to see him get so mad about Yuji and just kind of, like, prove that he's a genuine good guy. You know? He's yeah. not, like, up to tricks or shenanigans or anything. He's he's, a, a he's not guy. always just the silly little man. Yeah, he's he's got a lot going on underneath there. Uh I don't know, it's just really good. It's really good. I don't have too much to say about it other than it's really fucking good. Yes, I think that's fair enough to say, is that we will, uh, for the vast majority of this, we will be saying, it's a look back and going, god damn, this is good. And just yeah, being, like holy enjoying shit, it. this is really good. And I can't wait to see more of it as well. So that is the first five episodes down. Good start, I would say. We're obviously going to continue until season one finishes and then check out the movie itself. But it's good to know. We've never, so far, we have never done a series where we watched the first five episodes and went, you know what? Maybe not. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> uh, eventually on the list, we will have to reach something that breaks us. But for now, it, you know, honestly, if we can go through a lot of some of the worst stuff that we've seen, I think we can power through from, from the vast majority. Hey, of we watched the Gintama transphobia episode. We didn't say anything. <laughs> the barrier for the ultimate. You know, it's going to be a real shame because when we do eventually have to talk about Black Clover, none of its bad episodes will ever reach that level. So it can't even succeed at being the worst thing that we've right. seen. <laughs> It can't even have, like, the honor of being the worst thing we've ever seen because the Transphobia Gintama episode is unstoppable. Yeah. They would need to release their own Transphobic episode <laughs> to counter <laughs> ultimate, uh, <laughs> the ultimate heel move. But, yeah, that's all stuff in the future. But these five, five episodes have been great, and I can't wait to continue on with it. We will go through episodes 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 two weeks from now. Because uh, next week is obviously Kuroko, and we need to finish Back those three to episodes. Yes. Now that I have my schedule figured out, um, Fridays are real crazy for me, and I'm still trying to figure it out what the way my job is now. But don't worry, I've figured it out, I think. The answer is watch anime at earlier times <laughs> at more yeah at more reasonable times exactly don't all just do it on friday even though that's what i did today and i had to wake up at uh, about five hours earlier than i want after working all night but you know what it's worth it to talk about this to talk about yuji breaking in like the kool-aid man and see gojo again it's so funny how often in these first few episodes he just shatters through like 
walls and windows and shit. That's why I always liked him from the beginning. I don't know what were people's issues with him in the beginning when your main protagonist is just bursting through walls. <laughs> Arriving on scene when necessary. Exactly. And like he's just super crazy powerful and that's all he is. But then he doesn't have any cursed energy so he's fine. He's balanced out in a weird way so you can have a man like this just burst through walls and do all this silly stuff. But yep. That's it for Jujutsu Kaisen for right now. And that's also the end of Shonen Archive. So thank you very much for watching, especially if you made it all the way through here. This is a packed up episode with going an hour and 24. Both uh, episodes of Shonen Archive today have been over an hour. I think we've been basically going for three hours of Shonen Archive recording in total. Craziness, Zen. Craziness. It is. It is. But it's worth it. It is. It 100% is. So if you want to see some more stuff from Zenrot, you can go to his channel where he does uh, Shonen and Chill uh, with the Ocean Man, where I assume every episode is them talking about the new Jujutsu Kaisen chapter and saying how good it is or telling people why they don't, they don't understand it. I can only assume that's what Zen does for them. <laughs> I remember you got a, a post from it one time where it's like you spend like two minutes on one chapter and then you spend 20 on Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah, that tends to happen. Fair enough. Sometimes a chapter happens and you ain't got shit to say, to be honest. <laughs> That's just... Yeah, there's some chapters where you read it and you're like, well, that was cool. Next. Yeah, that definitely happens. So if you want to see that happen live, I suggest going over to his channel and checking it out. For more stuff featuring me, as always, you can stay on this channel and check out all the other channel stuff. you're already on. currently on. Hell yeah, baby. You go check out all the stuff I do. I'm a jack of all trades. And by that, I mean uh, YouTube is actively angry at me for being a jack of all trades. Yeah, YouTube hates that. Yeah, they do. Really They're badly. like, ah, damn you. And it's funny because I can feel the algorithm actively being confused. Because sometimes it will randomly be like, I don't know, man. I guess this Master Duel video is allowed to, to hit. We'll give you one on this. Does that mean you're just going to do this? And I'm like, nope, here's another Fago video. <laughs> yeah. Nope, sure here's more anime enough. discussion. Nope, yeah. here's more other game. Yes. If I could confuse you any further, I would. I want you to know this algorithm. But yeah, you can f uh, follow me on here to see more of me. And we will see you all on the next Shonen Archive. Thank you very much for watching. See you later. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out.